live coding session where we'll be starting a new project with the Wagtail CMS. Code Buddies is a global community of amazing people who help each other become better at software development through conversations on Slack and peer-to-peer -peer organized study groups and virtual hangouts. Today I'm here with my friend John and we're going to kick off a new project using the Wagtail CMS. Where, uh, John, you want to say hi? Hello, everyone. <laughs> is it cool that I, I said your first name? I guess. It's, it makes it easier for, for on a first name basis, at least. Oh. Who I am. <laughs> Come find me. Yeah, you'll find your GitHub profile if you uh, <laughs> if you do any pull requests or anything on this project. Cool. So we're gonna we've got a, a repository set up. We don't haven't started a, a project, um, but we'll be using this Wagtail CMS. And basically, this is a, um, a Python built on a Python web development framework called Django. And Django is a batteries included uh, web development framework. It's very mature, it's been around for a while. It's not vaporware like a lot of the sort of, well, many frameworks that come and go. Uh, I won't probably get off too much on a tangent there, but um, what Django- it Sounds like you've been burned. I've been burned, <laughs> we're having to rewrite. <laughs> our, our current software, we're having to rewrite it because of this uh, JavaScript framework is sort of evaporating. <laughs> the community's moved on. Um, but Django, doesn't really come out of the box with a sort of a content editor experience. And a lot of times when we're developing these websites, we want a really smooth, streamlined, and um, you know, elegant experience managing the content. So that's where Wagtail steps in. And it really it aspires, I think, to the level of a WordPress in terms of usability. Uh, so it's got some pretty nice features. We'll be able to delve a little bit further into this. And um, I've been working on the um, Western Friend website to go through a lot of these wagtail features as well, but we're gonna start from scratch here. So let's see if this try wagtail in seven lines lives up to its um, sort of promise. Uh, so I've cloned a repository locally. What I need to do is a little bit of a kind of a sidestep maneuver. I'll open up a new terminal. I'm in a previous project now. So we have this, um, let's look. This is my code directory. I got a bunch of stuff. We've got this Quaker CMS project here. If I open this Quaker CMS, it's just the bare bones stuff from this um, GitHub repository. What we're going to do is set up Wagtail and then copy the contents of this Wag, the auto scaffolded website into this Quaker CMS project. So. Let me make sure I've got Wagtail installed globally. Have you started the video, Riley? Yep, it's streaming. Twitch TV? Right. Yep, oh yeah. I thought you had been uh, been watching that. And in a moment, I might get a, I might need to make another pot of tea. It takes a little bit. I should start the water right now. Let me just run and do that really quick. Very cool. All right, feel free to, to hum some theme music if you want. <laughs> I need to sign in to Twitch to get that uh, video stream. Uh, you might have to just refresh. Did you do the hard fruit refresh of the page? Because I'm, I'm showing it streaming. I did, and there is a little live icon in the upper right corner yeah. of the video box. Yeah, um, try it in a different browser. <laughs> okay. That might be it. I don't know. Could be maybe Jitsi is colliding with it or whatever. All right, so we got. All right, cool. I'll wait for you for just one moment so you don't miss these preliminary steps. This is uh, the crucial juncture of how to get this project set up. So yeah. I'm going to put the uh, codebuddies.org spinner on, rotate, and I'll be right back.
Okay, are you able to see the video now? Yes, to my chagrin. View it in Chromium, but not Firefox. Yes. Okay, I just realized I'm totally in the wrong. Um, we're starting a new project, so I'm in the wrong um, scene here. Let's go ahead and put the correct URL. Yeah, I wish that... I don't know. I, I should eat, uh, follow my own advice, but I wish things would get tested both in Chrome and Firefox as a general practice. Yeah, because... Oops, let me get this GitHub link. So yeah, ah, darn it, come on. Things stick to the edge. You'll see this sliding around probably. Sorry for the difficulty here. <laughs> but that way people can access the code. Great. Okay, so all I've done here on the try wagtail and seven lines is to install Wagtail in my global environment. I'll, I'll go ahead and put on my headphones so I see it. Hey, what's up, Rekabik? Welcome. I'll put on my headphones here since we got uh, John on voice so that I don't get sort of a, an echo or a loop. And I'll just switch my audio. We're kind of experimenting with these live I'm actually going to mute myself, Riley. I'm going to follow you on... Uh, that makes sense. I was hoping, though, that you could uh, talk as part of the um, part of the live stream. Darn it! <laughs> because actually, we do need to discuss the uh, sort of the architecture here. We have some design decisions. Well, I'm not watching Twitch. Basically, you're in my vocal communications is pretty close to real time, or, but I don't know if I have the bandwidth for that, but I could try it. Let me just, uh, no, the problem with Jitsi is that it won't share just one of my computer windows. It'll only share either the whole like two monitor setup or a particular software window. So it won't really work. So maybe mute, so I don't know, mute the audio on the Twitch <laughs> and then just, yeah, then that way you'll see a little bit of delay on the code, but you'll be pretty close to real time. All right, I think that's what my brother did too. So now we're just gonna create a wagtail site. So on the second command is a wagtail start my site and we'll name it just something temp. And cool, Rekabik has just joined us in the chat. How are you doing today, Rekabik? What are you up to? Uh, let's see, so let's actually give this the correct name though, because it's gonna... Rigwick says, just doing Sunday things, preparing for the week. Yep, that's a nice kind of lazy Sunday. We just celebrated Independence Day here in Finland, and it's kind of a quiet, quiet weekend here now. Okay, my, my water has boiled. Let me just get my tea infusing. Be right back, and then we will get, we get to coding.
Okay, cool. Thanks for your patience. I normally try to get my tea and everything ready in advance. Today I'm running, cutting a little bit tight. I was cut, uh, had to run some errands and stuff. <laughs> After this, or? Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> we had to do some troubleshooting on both ends. John, it sounds like your bandwidth is really nice, though. Your voice is coming through really clean. And... <laughs> yeah. I was just wondering if it was, like, some sort of... Uh, well, I guess I can say this because I'm a U.S. citizen, but in some ways the United States is like behind. It's like an undeveloped country, <laughs> including like broadband. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Mm, yeah, I think it's probably a big part of it, the scale. But also I think there's elements of like, you know, corruption and, and uh, deregulation and monopolization in terms of bandwidth that's caused caused it to lag behind. Mm, right, that's a very good way of describing it. Okay, so let's check out this folder. Um, so when we just do this wagtail, pip, uh, sorry, wagtail start my site, it actually does several things for us. It creates a Docker file so that we can deploy our site really easily. Uh, it scaffolds the initial Django project. Hey, what's up, King of Glonks? Welcome, welcome to the channel. And um, it's got a lot of, uh, you know, so requirements text, everything's ready to go. I just need to copy everything here down to the one level up, two levels up, Quaker CMS folder, and then I always forget how to move everything except these two symbolics. So move star. Yeah, there we go. And I need, <laughs> all right, good. And there's uh, some hidden folders I didn't want to miss. Uh, hidden files, maybe folders. So let's go ahead and open the code and check it out. Uh, like this get ignore. So we're good to go. So I just need not the dot star, just the star. Perfect. All right, so I'll just go ahead and do, oh, yeah, one big commit for this initial project scaffold. It even does some JavaScript stuff. All right, John, where should we start today? What do you think um, would be a good... Let's see, get all these changes up there into staged and then commit it. Like a generic home page or start on a particular part of the app, part of the data model. Right, um, and I'm gonna extend on that. These placeholder documents might be sort of templates, but what, well, what do you mean by placeholder documents, just for clarity? Let me get my, so we're gonna use pipin for this project, pip environment, P, I, P, E, and V. Oh, come on. Good evening, Quantum, good to see you, welcome back. You missed earlier the um, the musical experiment. I, I, I sort of was able to get a new version of the, um, the Tonnets project, but it's not working on the deployment for some reason on GitHub the notes don't play. Something probably has to do with it, but really it is just a static HTML and JavaScript page with an embedded 
SVG. Mm, you think that it might not? Well, I can show you that JavaScript is being interpreted, but the audio context is not allowed to start. It must be resumed or created. And it's failing to load the favicon, but yeah, for some reason, there's a bug in the thing that's not letting the audio context start only locally when I run it locally. Strange, unfortunate, because I uh, have this musical Christmas tree now and you can change the waveform. You can't create an audio context before a user interaction. What does that mean, Quantum? That they have to click the page or something first in order to... It might work locally because it's less restrictive, yes. Okay. Ah. Uh, that's a good clarification. So that's probably why it's not working in Firefox and Chromium because they're both restrictive in that sense. You need to initialize the audio context in reaction to an event. Okay, cool. See, I wish you were, well, I wouldn't have discovered the bug in the live session, but let's, let's work on this one again next week. Uh, unless everybody's interested in doing the, the musical stuff, <laughs> I'm fine with either. Uh, we were just working on this this CMS project. Uh, John and I had been discussing. Uh, he had, uh, Quantum had the same issue on their JavaScript piano. Okay, cool. Re really good to know. Um, is there a link to your source code, Quantum, that I can review to see how you handled it or how you en enabled that session? Okay, so it looks like we're in our Pippin We've installed the uh, dependencies here. Let me make this a little, wow, look at that. Let's clean that up. So we've got the dependencies installed. We're gonna go into the shell and clean that, clear that out. So Python. Sounds like you've got some percussion in the background, John. <laughs> That's cool, I wasn't complaining, it's kind of <laughs> Funny. Mm hmm Yep, it resonates. I'll copy this link. Let's just take a look real quick at Quantum's JavaScript synth code. Add event listener. Add event listener. Okay, so on mouse down. By the way, I didn't check out my stream info. Okay, we're doing Python Django. It's less than ideal. So I'm just trying to think if... Um, all I would need is this just new window audio context and then, tone, then load the Tone.js code, I suppose. First click is in ignored. So they have to double click on it or? Yeah, maybe I'll just start the, when they load the page, I'll put a little power button or some kind of, you know, intuitive thing to like say, load the, you know, render the, let's get started. Cool, well, yeah, I think I'll figure out a pattern for this. And it's more and more, uh, it's increasingly seeming like I'll need some kind of a reactive JavaScript uh, sort of library to, to render and swap out page elements, but without requiring Webpack and no build tools. It should just deploy to GitHub pages when I push to master, no nothing else, uh, no Netlify. I, can, I think it's possible, I'm pretty positive. Just web platform if possible with a couple of extra helper libraries here and there. Okay, so now we're running. It looks like we've got this um, project running here. I will star this. Your first star, cool. And John, do you want to keep doing the, the Quaker CMS or do you want to work on uh, music stuff?
that's a pretty straightforward way. You can just toggle a display non CSS property on two containers to switch between them. Yeah, a little bit imperative, but sounds good. Simple and straightforward. Uh, so, John, are you still there? Did I lose you? You're muted. <laughs> yeah. The music thing? Okay. No Webpacker library. I like that quantum. Let me create a pull really quick. I just added this feature. for three minutes starting now which project should we work on do you see that <laughs> I'm just testing this out do you see that pole there I don't know how it works <laughs> oh yeah there it is so chat pause do to scroll. Okay, we would just have to pivot over here, but I have it open already. The Tonnets project. Okay, so John, is your vote for, are you voting on this poll? Can you see the poll? Should be on the Twitch change channel twitch screen quantum can see it all right did you cast your vote quantum <laughs> all right cool <laughs> It's anonymous, but you're the only person who's voted so far. Okay, so it sounds like, um, and it sounds like John's already digging into the um, the Python stuff. So let's just continue with Python. We're already set up and we're good to go. Uh, I got the GitHub repository here, and everything is ready to roll. So two things I forgot. Um, so I just got ahead of myself. After we create the initial project, we need to initialize the database and create a super user. And those are here on the screen. So actually, I'm just not following the instructions. Quantum has gently reminded me to read the manual on a couple of occasions. What is a Quaker? John, do you want to explain your um, kind of uh, interpretation of the Quaker faith and practice? good <laughs> that's pretty pretty studied oh oh darn it they can't hear you oh shoot that was such a good description John <laughs> one moment I gotta fix this I know that was so perfect but it's gone <laughs> oh shoot let me double check my audio properties. So it sounds like I'm talking to myself, basically. There you go. Now we can. Now we can hear. John, hey. Which is actually also somewhat fitting for Quaker doctors. Could you try to succinctly um, just uh, reiterate what you said? That was. Sure. Sure. So. so so Quakers are basically um, a, a, a Christian Protestant denomination uh, that has evolved to the degree that it is really 
cannot be considered exclusively Christian, um, but nonetheless continues to att attempt to reconcile the scientific mind with the, um, the mythological mind uh, through practices of contemplation and fellowship. It also has a strong emphasis on certain social values, uh, sustainability, peace, integrity, unity, equality, stewardship. Yeah, it's sort of uh, quenching our spiritual thirst in, in um, non-orthodox, non-contrived manner. There's basically non-ceremonial. There's, there's not a strict adherence to doctrine. There's a mm. um, in the Quaker hierarchy, uh, we place a higher emphasis on uh, personal revelation. Yeah, and continuing revelation, meaning the kind of Spiritual truth is continuing to be revealed to us. It's emerging through our daily lives. So we're up and running, and that includes building websites. It comes in lots of different ways. Um, so what we're trying to do here, wow, that's a cool new, um, <laughs> new design for the fresh wagtail experience. <clears throat> what we're trying to do here is um, Quakers have a long tradition of, of communicating and publishing letters of concern and, and with both within the Quaker community, like among meetings that are around the world, but also to, um, with regards to contemporary, contemporary issues like uh, Quakers were very involved with the abolition movement in the United States, or the, well, I guess probably worldwide, but in particular in the United States, to end slavery. And contemporary Quakers are using you know, digital technologies. Uh, sometimes we're confused with Amish, and we don't have who have a very uh, or or Luddites, I guess, also who don't use engage with technology or very limited uh, use of technology. Um, but we don't have that kind of restriction, uh, and we're sort of navigating a path, and we're sharing knowledge, and we're writing letters, and we're um, building community, and all that content like any community is done uh, dynamically and oftentimes really inconsistent and it's hard to kind of get at the information it's not structured so we're by offering a content management system we're hoping that Quakers will have like uniform templates to um, if they choose to adopt these um, to consistently publish things like um, events like when there are gatherings happening uh, epistles which are written letters of concern minutes which are sort of um, when a meeting, a group of Quakers comes to clarity and resolve on a particular issue, they will minute that, they will record their their unity or consensus on that issue. And at the same time, John and I are just wanting to provide this tool and also help, um, you know, increase our programming ability and things like that, hope, hoping that it'll be, you know, directly applied and useful to our communities. So I can log in here. And I've got the wrong password. I thought I created the super user. Let me try that again. So, being so silly. So let me just run this database migrations again. Uh, Quantum says he can barely hear you, unfortunately. Okay, well, can I boost OBS? Yeah, sorry, I just noticed that. Uh, John, can you go ahead and talk real quick? I'll make sure your voice is in the yellow. I've been actually on OBS. I have this volume really low. I'll try to take this video into post production and boost John's voice. But I have this. Um, okay, yeah, but recall also that I am muted. Um, because of the background noise that I am currently experiencing. True. So it's combination of factors, being muted, and when I was w working with this audio, um, you know, tool, it was kind of loud. Some of those uh, events are pretty abrupt, and, and um, so I have adjusted the volume for that. Let me just delete the the dummy database here. Move that to trash. I'll run the server migrations again. 
that will create all the, the tables for Wagtail Core, Auth, and things like that. We don't have any custom content types. Create a super user. Manage.py, create a super user. The super user I should be explaining as I go along is your admin user to manage the content and the site settings. All right, I'm just going to do really simple. I don't know how I managed it. Oh, I didn't bypass the. Hmm, I'm not sure how I managed to type the password twice and then hit Y, but then forget the password. I'm using my usual um, dummy password anyway, so I'm not sure what happened there. So let's let's log in now. All right, signing in. So cool. Right out of the box, it's just really disrupting when you're twice as loud as him. Yeah. Well, let me see. I can drop my volume down. And John, can you talk while I talk and I'll make these green bars approximately equivalent so that we don't disturb quantum. Okay, okay. I am talking. How's this quantum? Um, Are we approximately the same volume level? One, two, three. Four, five, six. How's that quantum? Good mix? Good audio mix? <laughs> this is perfect. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for pointing it out. Really do appreciate the feedback. I want the stream to be uh, enjoyable in the video and things also enjoyable. I've been watching these interesting videos on, um, just a quick aside, this um, uh, VCV rack. I think I might have mentioned this to you, John, this uh, Euro rack DAW, it's open source, you can make modular music with it. And um, it's crazy, it's mind boggling. And there's this really great channel, Omri Cohen, who does these excellent tutorials on like every module and how to do these compositions. And the, my only gripe is that his voice is high. And then when he, the music is playing, it's low. And I, I'll turn up the volume to listen to the music, but then his voice comes back in. So I think Quantum, you were experiencing a little similar thing to that where you would adjust volume to hear one aspect of the stream and then be overpowered by the other. Okay, so now we're back in, um, but yeah, I highly recommend Alan Co and, and uh, VC Rack if you're interested in the musical stuff. So by default, we have a um, kind of a homepage that's created. Um, I'll just kind of explain. This is the Wagtail admin section. It has a hierarchical content model. Sort of you can think of like it like nested folders in a computer or filing cabinets. You can kind of create your own filing cabinets and have specific types of files that can go in each of them each of the folders. And so this top thing is just a hierarchical navigation, content navigator, which we don't have any other content, so you'll see that more later. It comes with an integrated media manager, including you can up upload with drag and drop, you can crop and um, select the focal area of the picture. It's really cool, out of the box, without even having to write a single line of code. Uh, similarly, you can upload documents, and then uh, it's got Accounts management and groups out of the box. Collections, I don't remember. I haven't really figured out what collections are yet. And it's multi-site. So John, this is kind of one of the ideas behind my head is that if we get this project to a state where it's useful and has been vetted and developed, co-developed in the community, we could offer it as a service, a hosted service, uh, or the yearly meetings could offer this as a hosted service for their monthly meetings and things like that. Um, you just create a site, you tell it what the do domain is, the name of it, and you choose a root page. And each of the sites kind of acts like their own little publishing center. They're not really aware of one another, to what I understand. And that kind of brings up a question I've had about Wagtail, and that is, um, is it intended to build tools for others to use, um, or is that simply our purpose, um, but it primarily functions as sort of a, a, a CMS system for, you know, as a, as a CM out of the box? Uh, so it is, does not operate out of the box uh, as a CMS system. Um, I mean... So it doesn't have well, like a collection of sane defaults that function? I suppose it, it does. I mean, if I, well, no, not really, because... Um, Firstly, if I go to the front page here, this is really geared towards developers who are yeah. building CMSs. If I go to the front page, okay. it's just uh, really a dummy generic text that introduces the um, Wagtail 
project. Quan says, you can use it as a blogging platform out of the box, can't you? It's not like WordPress and um, it has a user experience of WordPress, but it doesn't have like, for example, a blog content type. It doesn't Thank come you, with that really helps. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's close, but it takes a couple of steps and we can go in that direction today. We'll um, hopefully we'll create, I guess, an initial homepage and mm -hmm. also be mindful that John, how many more minutes do you have? Yeah, I, I probably should get going in about 10 or 15 minutes. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's a little bit stripped down at first quantum, I think because they don't want to make any assumptions, but once, and it's really for developers to start projects and um, define your configuration as code. Uh, whereas with WordPress, it's ready to go as a blogging platform. And if you want to make custom content types, you do that as code, but it's a little bit, um, maybe, I'm not sure what the, how the user developer experience compares. And then Django, uh, Drupal, which I've been using for many years, several years at least, uh, you do everything point and click, and lately they've been going to configuration as code direction. Mm. So let's see, we've got a home app, and it comes with a model, which is a home page model. Great, let's go ahead and extend this home page model. And um, oh, I'm going to ignore this pilot for now. I'll come back to it. Um, so we'll look at how you define a content model in, in uh, Wagtail by going to the documentation. So uh, we're using, I just brought this up, Pippin uh, Python development for humans. Um, I'm a little bit worried about Pippin, if it's gonna drop off the radar, it's kind of tapering and uh, Adam Reach doesn't look like has been, or Kenneth Reach, uh, sorry, has been contributing to it. Adam Reach is an old roommate of mine from the Sunflower House Cooperative. Um, so we got the Wagtail admin and the home page. Let's go ahead and look at how we write a page model. So if you notice, the first app that was created here is the home app. The Quaker CMS is the main configuration folder and a search is an app where you can index your content and allow it searched. The docs folder here in our um, case is just some markdown docs from our meeting uh, last week. John, you'll recall those. <clears throat> meeting minutes. So it looks like an example Wagtail page model. If you wanted to define a blog, your first example is of how to create a blogging thing. John, do you think Quaker websites uh, tend to have a blog, an active blog at least, or are they turning mostly to Facebook and things like that? Um, if I recall, I think the Woolman site did attempt to have a blog. Like a, mm -hmm. I think it was used weekly just sort of updates on what's going on. Yeah, that right, that's right. And Wolman is kind of an exception, I think, at least in my mind, this is project is more geared towards me, uh, meetings, like yearly meetings or monthly meetings and, and things like that. Let's see. Yeah. And it looks like Wolman doesn't have a blog anymore, whereas Wolman is a more traditional nonprofit, Quaker founded nonprofit. So that's an Yeah, but I, I don't think they have a, a currently active blog. Yep, yeah, I, I didn't see that on the website just now. I checked it. So let's go ahead and uh, just modify this this home model and run this migration. So you have to have a your models are class based. This is inheriting you know from the Django workflow, but here we're in, um, inheriting this home page class from the Wagtail core page model. Let's take a quick look at this um, because it'll make it apparent the power of Wagtail that we're sort of inheriting uh, literally in our code. Um, the page model includes search indexing, um, sort of a drag and drop ordering. You can um, link many pages together and have a hierarchical relationship between them. It includes a title field out of the box and the ability to have draft states before the page is published. Uh, it creates URL slugs for you by default. Um, it links everything to various internal content types and you can have pages that are not live, uh, hence the, uh, the publishing you are, uh, sorry, workflow. It's got a method to get uh, the URL path and I believe this is the person who wrote the thing, search engine optimization. So it does a lot just right out of the box. And if I look here at the home page and I edit the home page, Currently, we only have a title field, but we have these the slug, homepage slug, the page title, 
Um, and whether or not it should show in menus and scheduled publishing. So I'll uh, go ahead and publish this change. I'll go to our main site, which is the local host one. I will select, oh, it's already configured as that, but it doesn't have a template. So we have to actually now do a template for it. Sorry, we'll go over here. Writing a page model. I think the template should be here defined home page. So yeah, we'll just delete this code. That so let's look at Django templating, just since we're more or less gonna have time to review this while you're here, John. Um, the main project configuration all lives in this Quaker CMS folder, which is named after the project itself. This base template is the HTML that wraps around all of the site content. Uh, so it's the master HTML template and the other content is rendered into it. And Quantum, you were mentioning, I think last time we were hanging out a few of like uh, templating libraries you've worked with, uh, Twig and things like that. So this is all just regular HTML, but then you'll notice these curly braces and, and blocks. This is the Django templating language. Blocks are regions of the page that you can put content into and provide default content for. So if we wanna have inside of the head, if we wanna let pages override the page title from a search engine optimization settings or have a suffix like Western, uh, like Quaker CMS, the best content management system for Quakers, things like that. That's all done in the head and through blocks. You can override CSS on a per page basis. And essentially here's the HTML body. It comes with the wagtail user bar, which is this little here, thing here. And an empty block for the page content and the option to insert extra JavaScript as well at the bottom of the page. So this is a generic master template that everything gets rendered into. And for each model, it is associated with a model template. So the home page model looks for a template called home underscore page in a folder that shares the name of the app. So we're in the home app and we're looking at the page template for the home page model. So things are pretty consistently named if you follow the follow along with that. So we can remove some comments. And we don't necessarily want to see this welcome page anymore, I think. So we're going to go ahead and just remove that as the uh, content, as the uh, comment suggests. Now you see our block content is empty. So if I, if I type H1, for example, hello, Wagtail. And we'll remove the default styles as well. So there's no extra CSS. There's n and just one thing in the content. Now we'll go ahead and refresh. And there we are. Now we've just sort of created an empty template. Now, how do we get the content from the model into the template? And basically, J Django templating gives us what's called a template context. And the content is inside of the context. And, we, and it has just the names of the properties on the class. So if we look back at the page class, every page has a title property. So in our template, we can actually just say, hey, let's put the title here in the content block, which again was part of the master template. Now, if I refresh, um, let's see, it should work actually. Page, let me double check, but uh, it should just be, oh, there it is. Okay, so you have to prefix it with page. I thought it would uh, kind of expand that object. Okay, so page refers to the current page and then title is the property we're trying to render in. Let's go ahead and add another field to the home page for a rich text field. So page body, does body make sense for pages? 
Or do we have an intro text, do you think? I'm sorry, what was that? Does body make sense to add for the home page, like a home page body, I suppose? Um, or would there be another yeah. few? Okay. And essentially what we're gonna do is, will you define your, in Django and Wagtail, you define your content model as classes. And then Wagtail does some interesting stuff in auto-generating forms and URLs for us. So if we tell Wagtail that when we're editing this page, we wanna show some content panels. The normal page content panels, which I have this syntax error, but let's go ahead and uh, take a look at it. So if I go and edit this page, I haven't uh, committed these changes to the database, but if I edit and that's, showing up as a result because I haven't run the migrations. So these are the default page panels. And we also want to render a couple of other panels um, so that we can edit the title and body. So I will do a little bit of copying and pasting here. run this migration. Field panel's not defined, so I gotta get my imports. I'll put these in alphabetical order. Very cool, now if I run the migrations. Uh, and so, Django is really helpful now that it has built-in migrations and it says we've um, noticed that there's already some content in the database and we're gonna provide a one-off default uh, in this case so that pages that have a empty body field, existing pages, they'll have some content there since, content in there since it's marked as required or I could actually make it optional. There we go, now we added an optional rich text field for the body. We'll apply that migration against our local database and run the server again. Now if I just um, refresh this editing page, we should actually have the content tab back, which now has the title field as well as the body field and rich text fields automatically render a WYSIWYG editor. So at this point, we could actually start creating multiple home pages. I believe uh, if we go to pages, create child pages of that. And it's w a little bit weird to have multiple home pages. So there's another thing we can do it was actually a feature request that I asked of mm. the Wagtail developers and they implemented like in the next release, it was really cool. Uh, I have to find the exact syntax here. Something like max instances or something like that. max count. So since we only really want to have one um, home page count, it's kind of silly to have to define a um, whole class for that, but that's the way it, w it works more or less. So now we can only have one home page. So if I go back into the um, 
sort of the wagtail content manager and I add a child page, there's no content types because we've already maxed out the number of home pages instances we can create. All right, so that's a brief tour of how wagtail models are defined and how to you know, configure the editing process. And the next steps, I guess, would when we have uh, another live coding session on this Quaker CMS would be to figure out the other co types of content we'll be publishing, whether or not a blog content would be making sense would make sense or epistles events calendar and also what is useful to see when you visit a Quaker meeting the first thing you see is the home page what information is useful there um, because we can add we can add more fields to this home page model if I edit this though You could italicize things, and all the rich text behaves as you normally would expect it. View that page live. Oops, uh, sorry. I have to now put it into the template. Uh, this is actually a good uh, thing. So here we have a wagtail content helper here. We can feed it into rich text. Let's see if we get an error there. I have to import that. If I just get the page body, let's take a look at that first. You'll notice that it's got HTML markup around it. Load wagtail. wagtail core tags and since we actually want this to render as markup as rich text markup then for safety there's a filter I believe it comes from wagtail core tags yeah that'll actually let you render the HTML content a selected subset of HTML safely to prevent people from injecting JavaScript and other potentially malicious content whoops all right so john are you nice. getting ready to head out are you yeah i think this is the perfect uh you know my bus stop <laughs> nice so, um yeah briley thank you for getting this up and running and uh showing us how it's done and i do look forward to our next meeting yep hopefully next week likewise thanks all right quantum nice uh, interacting with you um and i'll Signing out. All right, safe travels. Thank you. All right, at this point, uh, Quantum, do you think we should switch over to the music app? I think John and I are going to kind of um, decide the next steps of this, this CMS project. We're not quite clear on it yet. We just wanted to get a, the ball rolling a little bit today. We could um, pivot over to another project. I've got some, a little bit more time, about 30 more minutes. Quantum is still in the stream, or how to view the chat members. There should be a way to do it. I just don't know how to do it. All right. Well, in any case, um, let me just think for a second. I'll get these committed. So we want to ignore VS Code. So I guess I could do a quick poll. We got five viewers in the chat. 
Uh, well, I don't know that there's options for the poll. I think we'll just pivot over to this music app and see what we can come up with. There's a bug I want to fix to get this thing running on um, on the web. Let's just commit this model. So add homepage body. up and render home page very cool oops I have to cancel that stage that very good one moment Excellent. Oh, take those headphones off for a moment since we're not chatting. So let's go ahead and open recent. Well, here, I'll, t I'll just uh, end this live stream and then I will, I suppose I could start another one. I'm, I'm a little bit indecisive now. The viewership just dropped off from five to two, and I haven't had any feedback on whether we should continue. Uh, I might just go ahead and relax for a little bit. I have another meeting after this, but okay. So this has been another uh, Code Buddies live coding session uh, where we've kicked off this Quaker CMS project. Um, Code Buddies is an active community. If you're interested in Python, data science, uh, data manipulation, there's a lot of opportunities to learn there, as well as people who are interested in JavaScript, Java, Ruby on Rails, PHP, you name it. There's no real um, one way to do it when we're developing. The main reason Code Buddies exists is to help um, so that we can help one another along our learning journeys and develop cool projects. The Code Buddies platform itself is also open source. And right now we're in the process of rebuilding the platform from scratch uh, using multiple technologies, proofs of concept to see what the best fit is for the uh, future of the project. So if you're wanting to get involved at the ground level of an open source project, uh, stop on by codebuddies.org on GitHub, uh, github.com slash codebuddies and get involved. We'll gladly onboard you to the development process. All right, well, thanks for everyone who stopped by the chat. Uh, hey, level two learn, I just noticed you're so quiet there. Are you interested, level two, in doing some um, of the audio development, or, uh, or do you need to run soon? I have I have thirty minutes, and I can do a little bit more live coding on this um, on this audio app. If you want to check out what I've done today, just want I'm just trying to gauge the interest of uh, people. In, okay, level two says sure. Okay, what I'm going to do is just going to I'm going to end this um, uh, live stream change the title and start a new live stream. That way things are, it's one topic, just focused on one topic. But okay, thanks for stopping in. I'll see you in just a little bit, level two learn. Thanks uh, again, Quantum, for also stopping in and participating in the chat. It's always nice to have people actively chatting there. Thanks for watching and have a great day.